Stormtrooper's watching, he has to be watching. Good morning, bro. Alright. You sleep alright? Yeah, not too bad. You did? I was up 1.30. Boom! Just straight up. Boom! Morning, America. Right, we're off to get breakfast. More swings coming at you today. This guy's got some hat game. But maybe some different path game could help. We're going to help him with that. That there. You beat me. Are you going to allow that there to beat you? Sweating no. Sweating it out a bit. <laughs> I've just realised I've not done question of the day. The answer to yesterday's question is you need to hit up or down whatever's most functional. Finding fairway always wins. You maybe gain a little bit more distance if you hit up with other things are in place, but use the most functional angle of attack you can. Today's question, at the end of the day, because I forgot to do it earlier, what is gear effect? Down there, comment me up. What is it? They're all going bruh. They're all going bruh. He's going. Right, with today's swing, we're going to start a little bit with posture, arms hanging too far out in front of him. So let's see if we can get those arms hanging down a little bit better from his shoulders. Because then what we see is a pull away where he wants to really push everything even further away from him. And on top of his backswing, I'd like to see his hands further behind him, maybe more rotated in his hips. And then the downswing, we see that shaft steepening up and he's definitely swinging left. He tells me he suffers from cuts, block cuts. Also, he says he gets the odd shank sometimes. So uh, we're gonna talk maybe about that as well. Crossfield, hey. I heard you were a rebel. <laughs> Spread the word, stormtroopers need love too. We're not all bad. Right, I'm at the Foresight booth with the new quad. I'm just gonna show you a difference with posture. What I want you to do is change the setup a little bit. So we see you with your hands way out in front of your shoulder line. Try and get those hands a little bit more under your shoulder line. Having them so far out in front of you just encourages you to push them away. That's not the same for every player. I see other players pulling it way back from there, but often when they start further away than that, it's like they've got this desire just to constantly push that club away from them. Hands under those shoulders and then I want you just to feel that you're just putting those hands back towards your right pocket a bit more rather than creating this massive gap that you create. Just get the feeling of pulling that club on that different path and we can see where the shots go from there. Let's answer your questions. Morning Guru, I hope you enjoyed Orlando and your jammy shots. You talk a lot in your videos about players delivering the club in certain ways, be it high handle, open closed, club face, wrist conditions, maybe what's happening with their hips. I assume that 99% of this is subconscious, um, the player's skill set and ultimately the hand eye coordination that player trying to try its best to cover up the mistakes they're making within that swing. The result, does this mean the higher your skill set or the higher your skill level, the quicker you respond to changes of thoughts that you put into your swing? Does this mean a lower skill player will take a longer time to figure out how to deliver a strike with a new change, i.e. your classic revving it, revving it at the top of the back swing? How long should that lower skill player persevere with a new thought or change? Thanks, bro. I look forward to your response. I'm just trying to get out of this space. It's different player is player specific so the more oh uh, uh, got ya um, the how do I get out here down here the better player can often practice a different array of skills much easier because they're what I would call less fragile so some lessons that you coach are just really really fragile so you can tell them the smallest thing and they just pop they just like can't hit it like totally can't hit it so what that means is you've got to teach them in a very careful way where with a more skilled player you can really push them not all the time because sometimes they're fragile as well I've worked with some good players and tour players and they don't want to be pushed they don't want to think about it but the general rule is you get a quite a fragile amateur and you've got to be gentle you've got to be really careful you've got to kind of really help them change make small changes rather than go for the bigger ones how long does it take and again that's a very specific question to the player because you can't 
it, you don't know until you start working with them. You really don't. And that's the skill I think with the coach. You start reading the person and you can read how quickly or not you can start changing them. I think it's more actually to do with learning styles than it is actually the ability to a certain extent as well. But generally, your better player is a more skilled learner. Hence, what on earth is going on there? Hence, them. hey, how you doing, all right? <laughs> Um, so yeah, the more skilled player generally is a better learner, hence they're a more skilled player, as well as having that kind of physical ability to just perform better. Hope that helps. Right, I'm off for more meetings. Right guys, just about to do an interview with Golfway. Dot SE. Dot SE, Sweden. That's it. Look at all the cameras, lovely cameras. My camera's as big as your cameras, boys. <laughs> <laughs> right guys, that was a fun interview with Swedish, I can't remember what they were called, but it's a website in Sweden. Right, we're back in the Foresight curve screen with the quad. And let's see if I can just show you what happens with this guy's club path. I'm going to try and do his swing and we're going to get some numbers called out on path and face just to show you how you might want to change it. Right, let's show you what happens when I swing the way you swing and then give you some ideas what might uh, help you to move that path it's more inside, more towards you. So I'm going to go this way. What path are we going to get on that one? is 7.9 out to it. So the path is 7.9. Can you bring that screen back up? Uh, the path is here. It's 7.9 out to in. Now I could redirect from the way you're going, but most amateurs don't. They just follow the pattern that they set. So picking that club out the way you do is would encourage me to make that kind of angle of attack. Face the path. Yeah, face the path to 10 degrees open to your path. So the face was 10 open to the path. So if you start taking loft off that club, I'm going to lose it to the right, those kind of things. Where did I strike it? Well, I'm, I actually struck it out the middle of the bat. So your idea is if you're feeling like you're going to hit the necks, I see lots of students do find the neck when they move the path that far out to in. But it's very player specific. I wouldn't do that. I feel I could still hit the middle of the bat. So look, really simple ideas for pulling that club on a different path. So I want you just simply to pull the club feeling like it's literally going behind you. Someone who pushes it so far out, I want you just to simply pull it behind you and hit a few shots. Now what you might find... We'll look at the path for that one. 3.7 into out. So the path now is 3.7 into out. So I've moved the path 10 degrees with my own feel, and that's where the skill really lies. You don't want to look for some kind of secret drill, some secret answer. You want to be able to move the path to order like that. That's a skill in itself. If you can do that, you'll be able to find a middle ground if you want, or stay with the path moving more into out, which could help you with a very different shape shot. Right Matt, one show, done. Tips. How was it for you? Fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of golf stuff, isn't there, in the world? Yeah, a lot. Like, global warming is a reality, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Not in the golf world. Right, more coming at you tomorrow. I'm filming with the Golf Channel tomorrow, so I will have more limited time, so tomorrow's vlog might be shorter. Hit the subscribe button. And remember to go down these stairs. Yeah, I think so. Follow in the normal places and send those video questions in. Little tip, I post. Send your video questions in for today's vlog and what happens is I get 20 swings. That's not a video question, that's a swing. <laughs> Second top tip, I'm just doing tips, Matt. Tip of the day. When I say send your video questions in now and often I'll write video in capitals, People send me lots of questions in text format. I want them in video. I want to show the world your beautiful faces, your beautiful questions, like that beautiful face. Look at that beautiful face there. <laughs> send me video questions and I shall answer them. I'm gonna finish on what I think is a traditional thing for me to do in America. Woo! Woo! <laughs> no one look. They just don't even look. It's like. There's a noisy person, that's standard. That Stormtrooper knew my name, Matt. What a legend.